All right, strap in, everybody. We're going deep today. We're talking quantum mechanics. Oh, yeah. You with me. This study, uh, so, this physics study, it's really making waves, questioning some pretty fundamental stuff. Spin statistics. Yeah. It's We're a... looking at, we got a press release here. Right. From the Chinese Academy of Sciences, mm -hmm. and then somebody... Somebody wrote in, kind of throwing a wrench in the works, you know? Yeah, throw some, some cold water on it. Yeah, a little bit. It's going to be a wild ride, I think. So, okay, to kick things off, something I bet you remember. That X-ray image of the comet back in 96. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That got everybody talking about, uh, what is it? Charge exchange. Charge exchange, yeah. Yeah, swapping electrons, basically. Right. High-speed collisions. So, ions and atoms... They bump into each other, and electrons are like, see ya. That's it, electrons jumping around. And it turns out, if you want to understand, <laughs> yeah. like all that X-ray light we see from space. It's like a it's like a giant decoder ring for the universe. Astrophysicists, we rely on this stuff. Figuring out what's going on in distant stars, galaxies, all that. Right, so this study, they focused on a very specific uh, interaction. They smashed these C3 plus ions. Carbon ions, yeah. Missing three electrons. Three electrons gone yep. into helium atoms. And they used uh, this thing, like, super precise. Oh, yeah. This is amazing technology. It's called a reaction microscope. Oh, reaction microscope. Yeah. And they could see what happened, like, the exact moment the electron was captured. Oh, incredible detail. It's, uh, it's almost like watching it in slow motion. Yeah. The collision. So you see, like, the spin states of these particles. Yeah. And, they, and it's always been assumed that these exchanges, they follow the rules. Right. It's spin. It's like it's a fundamental property, like an intrinsic angular momentum. So every particle is, is kind of spinning. It's not really spinning like a top. It's more of a, it's a quantum property. Oh, okay. But we use the word spin. Okay. You're... But it affects how they interact. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But this study, it was in physical review letters. Big deal. Yeah. Pretty prestigious. Yeah. And uh, saying those rules, maybe they're not so ironclad. Especially at high energies. Especially at high energies. That's where things get interesting. Okay. So what did they, what did they measure? How did they figure this out? It's called uh, spin-resolved cross-section ratios. Okay. So picture a dartboard. Ah. And you're throwing darts. Okay. The cross-section ratio tells you how likely you are to hit a certain area. Right. Now imagine those areas on the dartboard, they represent different spin states. Correct. Traditionally, we expect the darts to land, you know, certain areas with a very predictable probability based on these spin statistics. Right. So if you're good, bullseye every time. Not exactly, but in this study, yeah, the darts they weren't landing where they were supposed to. Whoa! It deviated like significant, significantly from what traditional spin statistics would predict. So they're saying something else is going on. Something else is affecting this. Something else is at play. Okay, but now hold on, because you mentioned there was a little bit of pushback. Right. Right. Someone uh, left a comment on the press release. Oh, really? And uh, very skeptical. Of the findings. Oh, right. Questions the whole scientific establishment. Wow. Strong opinions. So are they saying the whole thing is bogus? Well, not not necessarily bogus. They just question the whole assumption that charge exchange has to follow these spin statistics in the first place. Okay. They even bring up uh, alternative theories about, about space time itself. Whoa. Pretty deep stuff. Yeah. So why why should I why should I care about all this? I'm not a physicist. That's a fair question. But here's the thing. If these findings hold true, it could have massive ripple effects. Okay. Not just for physics, but for how we understand astrophysical phenomena, uh, how we design experiments, even things like uh, quantum computing. That's wild. It is wild, but it's also a really great example of how science works, right? It's an evolving process. It's all about like questioning. Questioning. And revising as new evidence comes yeah, out. Yeah, actually, never a dull moment. All right. So we got this groundbreaking study, raises more questions than it answers. We got a skeptic out there questioning everything. Yeah. And the potential for some some seriously mind-blowing implications. Yeah. So what do we do now? Well, that's where you come in. We've given you the pieces, the players, the evidence, different perspectives. Now it's up to you to ponder, think about the implications, form your own opinion. I love that. Yeah. Listeners, fire up those neurons. Things are about to get really interesting as we... Uh, dive deeper into this whole spin statistics saga. It really makes you think, you know, like, are we missing something about how these tiny particles, how they act? Yeah, it's it's like, 
we thought we knew the rules of the game <laughs> and now suddenly the rules are like bending. Yeah. Or what? or maybe there's another rule book we haven't even found yet. Okay, so to wrap our heads around all this, let's uh let's go back to the experiment itself. That that microscope thing they use, the reaction yeah, microscope. Oh yeah, that's some seriously cool tech. It's it's not just looking at something tiny, it's like Yeah, it's not just magnifying, right? No, no. It's uh it's almost like freezing time. You see the particles right before and after they collide. You can measure their energy, their momentum, their spin. Wow. So they're seeing the quantum world in action, basically. Exactly. And with incredible precision. That's why they could be so sure about this this deviation from the spin statistics. That they did something else really clever, too. Oh, yeah. They chose C3 plus ions specifically because they don't have those, uh, what are they called? long-lived excited states right right remind me what does that mean again so basically after the ion captures an electron it settles down really fast it's like boom i'm good i'm stable exactly no hanging around in some weird energy level so that makes the analysis like way cleaner exactly so they can be sure they're measuring the spin stuff and not some other uh atomic weirdness yeah it eliminates a lot of potential problems a lot of what ifs okay so that strengthens their case yeah but but we can't forget about our skeptical friend, right? Right, right. They were pretty vocal, not just about the results, but about, like, the whole system of science. Yeah, like, how much can we trust the experts, mm. the journals? Yeah. Like, physical review letters, that's a pretty big deal, uh, right? Yeah, it's one of the top journals in physics. Their peer review processes, it's rigorous, it's tough. So not just anyone can publish there. Yep. You gotta, you gotta have the goods. You gotta have the goods, mm -hmm. and multiple experts have to look it over and say, "Yeah, this is solid." Okay, so that gives the study some weight. But, but science is all about questioning, right? Always. Even the big journals, <laughs> even the big names. Absolutely, and that's why it's good to have those dissenting voices. They make us think, "Why do we believe this in the first place?" Right, right. And our skeptic, they brought up some some really interesting points, like why should charge exchange have to follow these spin statistics anyway. Yeah, yeah. We just assumed it did because that's what we always learned. Right. But maybe, maybe there's something deeper going on. Okay, so they're pushing us to think outside the box. Yeah. But they also brought up those uh, those other theories, right, about uh, space-time. Yeah, they went pretty deep down the rabbit hole there talking about alternative models of reality, stuff that gets pretty mind-bendy. Yeah, that's a little out there for me. But but I guess it shows there are other ways of looking at the universe. Absolutely. And who knows, maybe those seemingly crazy ideas will turn out to be the key to unlock in even bigger mysteries. All right, so we've talked about the study, the skepticism, the mind-bending theories, but i got to bring it back to, like, what does this all mean for me, you know? The average person. Right, right. But like, is it just some esoteric physics stuff, or is there a bigger takeaway? I think there is, and it's about it's about uncertainty. This study, it's, it's showing us that even our most fundamental ideas about the universe, they can be challenged. Yeah, it's like the ground can shift beneath our feet. Exactly. And that can be scary, but it's also incredibly exciting. It means there's always more to learn. Yeah, there's always a new adventure around the corner. Exactly. And it's that spirit of exploration, that willingness to question, that drives science forward. And it's something we can all apply to our lives no matter what we do. I like that. It's about staying curious, staying open to new possibilities. Exactly. Never stop asking why. So if this research is really changing how we understand spin, how particles work, what could that mean for other areas of science? Like, what are the ripple effects? That's where it gets really interesting because the possibilities are, they're almost limitless. All right, so we've seen how this experiment is really messing with what we thought we knew about spin statistics. Hmm. But the thing that's really got me hooked, it's like, what does this all mean for, like, everything? That's where it gets really, really exciting. Because if spin statistics aren't as set in stone as we thought, it's like, it's like opening up a whole new wing of the physics building. Okay, so what kind of rooms are we talking about here? Like, what's behind these doors? Well, first off, think about astrophysics. You nah. know, trying to model something like a star or even something as crazy as a black hole. Right, with all that crazy gravity and heat and, and particles flying around. Exactly. And we talked earlier about how important charge exchange is. For understanding the x-rays, those things are blasting out. Right, right. Like a cosmic decoder ring. But if those charge exchange interactions, if they're not following the spin rules we thought they were, our models, 
they could be totally off, like way off. So it's not just like, oh, we need to adjust our calculations a little bit. It's like, we might be looking at the data completely wrong. It's possible. It's like, you know, you're trying to put together a puzzle, but you're using the wrong picture as a guide. Yeah, that's a, that's a big deal. And it's not just looking back in time at these faraway objects, right? This could also change how we do experiments here, like particle accelerators. Yeah. Those giant atom smashers. Oh, yeah. You're talking about smashing atoms together near the speed of light. Yeah. I always picture them as like a, a giant cosmic pool table. That's a good analogy. And if we got to factor in these deviations from spin statistics, it's like, it's like suddenly realizing the pool table's tilted. Oh, wow. Or the balls are like square. Yeah. Changes the whole game. Might need to rethink how we build those accelerators or even what kind of collisions we try to create. Okay, so this is impact on both theoretical and experimental physics. That's huge. But uh, what about the rest of us? You know, the non-physicists. Is there something in this for us? That's where it gets really interesting, because anytime there's a big change in how we understand physics, it can trickle down into technology. Yeah. And remember, quantum mechanics, as weird as it is, it's behind a lot of modern tech. Okay, give me an example. Think about quantum computing. That's a field that's like exploding right now. People are talking about revolutionizing medicine, material science, even artificial intelligence. Right, right. I hear all that. And you're saying the spin stuff, it could play a role in that. Absolutely. A lot of quantum computing schemes, they rely on manipulating spin. So if our understanding of spin is changing, it could directly affect how we design and build these quantum computers. So potentially more powerful quantum computers. Could be. More efficient, more powerful, maybe even whole new approaches we haven't even thought of yet. Wow. So this really abstract physics study it could end up shaping the future of technology. It's definitely possible. Of course, it's early days, and we need more research to figure out exactly what it all means, but that's that's science, right? Yeah, always more to discover. Exactly. Always more to learn. Always more questions. Well, this deep dive has taken us all over the place, from the edge of space to the inside of an atom, and then straight into the future. That's what we do here. We've got this study that's shaken up a fundamental rule of physics. We've heard from our skeptical friend, reminding us to question everything. And we've explored how all this could change how we understand the universe and even lead to amazing new technologies. And I think the biggest takeaway for everyone listening is stay curious. The universe is full of mysteries, and even the stuff we think we've got figured out, it could all change tomorrow. Keep exploring. Keep asking questions. Who knows what you might discover? Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Until next time, keep those minds curious and keep exploring.